finally a big mature deer comes in front of me 29 yard shot yeah It's an unbelievable deer. You caught him. We see time and time again that a hunt changes as the season goes on, almost taking on a life of its own. And instead of us calling the shots, that hunt takes us where it wants to go. And that's the case this week. Mr. Jason Peterson's the hunter, and we're after a big old nine point. And like usual, his hunt makes some big changes along the way. But first, like all our hunts, it starts much earlier in the year in the summer, getting set up. She's a foggy one today. Got her all loaded up last night. Dean's got all the blinds and the few tree stands. Camera batteries, cameras, Kimco. Just talk to Dean and Steve, they're coming from the other direction with another load of stuff, so we've got a lot of stuff to get out today. By doing most of the hunts ourselves versus using outfitters means a lot more work, but that work setting up and scouting is what we love most about our time spent in the field. The spot that we're setting up is just one of those tried and true tested spots. Uh, it's actually where in 2010 Stevie Sismar shot a 184 inch typical, a tremendous buck and what it is, it's a big channel running out to an alfalfa field and every year the deer run it, I mean it's just a perfect natural funnel out to that alfalfa field. And there's a couple great bucks here this year that we're hoping to get a chance at and uh, this spot's just the spot every year. So we got a little bit of brush we're going to put on there but we're not going to put too much on because you can see it's pretty open underneath so we're going to try not to make the blind stand out too much. but one of those spots that every year is just a great spot. The deer that Jason was going to hunt here this year was an old tall tine nine point with good heavy beams and he'd been in the area for years and we felt that this would be the year to try and line up on him. Now set up and ready it's October before it's time for Jason to get in and hunt the big nine. The first day of any hunt is always the most exciting, wondering how the season will start off and to get a feeling of how the deer are moving. Richie just phoned and he's running a little bit late, so I'll meet him halfway or something. And I want to get to the meeting spot before Richie does because if he gets there first, then it's going to be, well, you're late, so I got to be there first, so he's late. He's actually beat me here. Yes, yes. You're late. I was here 10 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, I just drove by and I just wanted to see if you were here. I just, oh, started, yes, just yes. checking some stuff out. Um, ready to do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get out we'll get hiking in there and uh, sit all afternoon and till dark and see what we can see I don't know why a guy doesn't try to shoot his deer early like Richie does because you don't have to hardly wear any clothes that time of year wants to get down to like minus 20 tonight
Shortly after getting settled, the deer began to move by Jason's blind. As the evening plays on, this fantastic 5x5 makes an appearance, and although already a great deer, he's a deer that we're hoping will survive for another season or two. The 5x5 is followed shortly by this tall tine young 8-pointer. October passed and Jason was unable to produce a daylight encounter with the Big Nine, so we went in to change things up hoping to increase Jason's odds for the late season. It's hard to tear down and move a spot that's been so good in the past, however after hunting all of October with no encounters or daylight spy point photos of the Big Nine, a change is definitely needed. So we're going to pack up the blind, pack up the camera, and we're going to try to get farther down this fence line to try to catch them a little bit earlier before they head out to the alfalfa. So we're going to set up the blind over here in hopes to catch them deer coming down the fence line or one of these channels. And they're heading past the old spot where the blind was out to the alfalfa field. Jason's decision on moving the blind was exactly right, as immediately we began getting good daylight spy point photos of the Big Nine and Jason's hunt was back on track. Welcome back. Before the break, Jason was reset up and had the big nine coming by in good daylight. And now the season was back open and he was headed in to hunt. We had a big nine boyer that I hunted quite a bit. Coming by, early season he's back. Going through here pretty regularly. Shortly into the afternoon, a nice nine point makes an appearance. And although not Jason's target buck, he's a great up and comer. The young nine is followed by this tall tine eight point with tremendous brows and he's another deer with great potential. As Jason watches the eight point and waits for an encounter with the old nine point, well little does he know that he was waiting on a ghost. Gonna be a slimer eight point someday. I think he's in three there. Well that evening we got news and verified that another lucky hunter in the area had taken the big nine. And with only about a week left in the season, that left Jason little time to get set up and start over. However, Cam Sutherland was still set up on a great 5x5, and it was actually a deer that we had filmed a year earlier while Cam was hunting. The deer that Cam had in mind was a heavy beam 5x5 that we had filmed with Cam last year, and it was a deer that Cam had wanted to let walk for one more year, until this season. And now this year, Cam, having already taken a Boone and Crockett class typical with me earlier in the season, well, Jason was headed to Cam's stand to try for some late season luck. 
Cam had been getting footage and trail camera photos of the heavy 5x5 since 2009, and we'd filmed the deer with Cam in 2012. And although now this year his tines had gone down some, the mass that he carried in his beams was on an all-time high, and Jason was headed in to hope for some final hour luck. Probably gonna try to hunker in here. It's a big bull. All the deer coming in this bull. Stage up to head out to the fields. All of Jason's hoping begins to pay off as some bucks begin to move at last light, when Jason looks to his left, and there's the heavy 5x5. Five five. Welcome back. Before the break, all of Jason's hoping for an encounter with a mature deer in the last days of the season had just came to fruition on his first set for the heavy 5x5. Finally, a big mature deer comes in front of me. 29 yard shot, yeah. I'll probably just wait till dark and wait for Richie. Richie's sitting with my wife, Terry, tonight. And uh, hopefully they're having some good luck. Hope and pray that the rest of the guys sitting in blinds and stands tonight are having as good a luck as I just did. Pretty special deer right there. Minus 20 some out and I was frozen that blind. I haven't been up there to see him yet, but I just know he's a big, big mature deer. So let's head over there and take a look. You coming, Steve? You betcha. Yeah, I saw him fall over at the top of the hill. Yeah. Then he went up to the top. Right there, Steve. Right on. <laughs> well, he didn't make it very far, did he? No. Oh, what, 40 yards? Yeah, both that. I saw him tip over on the hill here. Nice. nice. Holy, look at the mass in that thing. Oh, he, he ever got good mass, eh? Yeah, he's down high. I saw him fell over here. Oh, look at that buck. <laughs> look at the mass in that thing. Wow, doesn't that look good? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So nice to finally after I don't know how many days, finally get a mature buck in front of me. Yeah. I mean, I had to rub my eyes two or three times. <laughs> is it really a big mature deer? And there he is. And, you know, I was fortunate to make a really good shot at just under 30 yards. And, and uh, yeah, pretty, pretty excited about it. And I thank Cam for passing him up last year because if he wouldn't have passed him up as a four and a half or five and a half year old, I mean, we wouldn't have had, we wouldn't have been sitting here right, right here tonight, so. Well, let's get a tag on him. Congratulations, Pete. Thanks, Good buddy. shot. Thanks, buddy.
Like everything in life, you can start out in one place and end up somewhere totally different, but more often than not, it works out for the best, and a deer hunt is no different. Now while Jason didn't take the buck that he had originally set out for, he did take a tremendous deer. And it's yet another testament to how working together with friends and other hunters that share the same area can be a big win for everybody. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Canadian Whitetail.